start. So solving the cyber security iron crisis, I would like you please to welcome Vinci Farto. Merci bien. C'est la deuxième année que j'ai le honneur de parler à vous à Mudahat. And now back to English. <laughs> this is about a problem that was announced in the United States about three months ago. We cannot find enough cybersecurity people to help defend the country or corporations. There are not enough good technical people to hire. Do you think that's true? You think that's true? <laughs> the problem for me began many, many years ago. I went to get a job at AT&T, the telephone company, and become part of a research group at Bell Labs. I passed every single test there was until they gave me one of these and they brought out two wires and said, what color are they? I'm colorblind and I never got the job. So I go across the street to the next best company in 1969, IBM, and I want a job with them and I pass all of the tests until the end. They wanted me to change from that into this. I never got the job. This is discrimination in 1969. I was colorblind, I had long hair, we had very few people of color that we allowed to do things. But today, I believe that we, as countries and as big companies, are discriminating against the best talent available in the world. Lots of you guys here in France, all over the United States, Canada, England, everywhere I travel. We're discriminating against the very best people, yet our governments and companies are saying we can find no talent. Number one, all people are not created equal. People in this room, people that come to Nui de Hat, we are different. We're not like everybody else. We do not fit into the same mold. Our idea of having fun is taking apart a computer, or playing with new technology. That's fun. Normal people go to the movies or go to the beach. We do different things. But the UK is also saying we cannot find enough people. The problem is they're trying to find people that are just like them. And that is not going to work. So who's looking? Well, the, you may know some of these buildings. That's the National Security Agency, the Pentagon, financial sector in London, and one of the big banks in the United States. So they're looking for these people, but so are the criminals. The criminals are now competing with governments and corporations for the kinds of talents that people like you have. Only thing that the criminals want is results. They care about nothing else. They are not discriminating, which makes it very difficult to compete when nation states are bringing entire armies to global cyber war. First thing we have to do is forget about degrees. Forget about a Bachelor of Science, is what we call it in the US, or a Masters of Business Administration. In the United States, and in Canada, and different rules around the world, unless you have that piece of paper, they can't hire you. They can't even talk to you. 
because you do not qualify. Yet how many people here, how many people do you know have really good technical IT and security skills that maybe only went to high school, as in the case up here? We are being discriminated against because maybe we chose that we did not want to go to college and we preferred to come to events like this and learn skills. Companies do not know how to define the skills they want. Even the CIO, even the management folks have trouble defining. They want the skill sets, but they also want you to be able to write reports, give speeches, interact with upper management, help convince them they should spend more money on security. Again, they're looking for you to fit into what their idea is what a technical person should be, not what one really is. We need to get politically incorrect to solve this problem. We have to change the rules. And in the United States, being politically incorrect is one of the things that's hurting us, not only in IT, but politically. We find reasons not to do something instead of finding a way to do it and get it done. It is easier for management to cover their ass and say, no, that's too hard. How many of us went into problems and run away because they're too hard? That's what we love. It's hard. Now let's find a way to solve it. So it's political incorrectness we have to introduce into this as well. And part of it is telling people, you're nothing special. Not every little kid does everything great. None of us do everything great. That's why we are a community. That's why we use networks. Why we reach out to our friends and colleagues and get introduced. Because we know we're not special, we have skills. But everybody else out there has skills too. So we need to get over this helicopter parenting, is what we call it in the United States. Little Johnny is good at everything. Little Johnny is perfect at everything. Little Johnny will never lose. And that's not the reality of the world. We need to learn to embrace failure. Failure is really, really good. As how many people in this room have failed, have broken something? How many times has somebody failed? Of course, that's how we learn, by failing. In my prior career, I learned more when entire things completely collapsed and fell apart and I had to get them going again. 99% of success is based upon failure. We need our governments, we need those people that are hiring us to understand that we have to fail in order to learn how to succeed. We have to know how to attack in order to be able to defend. We need to start this all the way down with the little kids in schools when we start exposing them to history, mathematics, science, technology. Find where their talents are. We cannot succeed in IT, in security, if we try to build everybody to look and be the same. I want to embrace autism. Autistic people, Asperger syndrome. We all know people that have some amount of Asperger's. It's called the Asperger's spectrum. And there are degrees. Some are high functioning people, some are lower functioning people, and they have some weirdness about them. But I bet that you just like I know people with Asperger's that are amazing coders, amazing problem solvers, because they can focus so well. Don't expect to read this, but this chart goes through the spectrum. 
and I'll make the slides available to you, goes through the different types of distractions and what are the differences and how can we use these differences to give us more people to work in IT and IT security. ADD, ADHD, hyperfocus, lack of focus. Tom Edison, not only did he fail 1,999 times before inventing the light bulb, finding the one way that worked, he also had ADD. He could sleep two or three hours at a time, and then he would go back to work because his mind was always going. He was a bad boss, but he had ADD, which made him a bad boss. And many of the people you run into in hiring, when you're talking to human resources, they look to move you to management. Many of us don't want to go to management. We just want to have fun with the technology. Not everybody is created the same. This gets into what Chris was talking about. Whom can you trust? The argument often is, we cannot trust the hackers. We cannot trust people with our systems unless they are pure, unless they are perfect. They have no criminal record. They have never done anything wrong. We've all done something wrong. That's the nature of failure. That's the nature of growing up. What I advocate is that we use Chris's techniques in initial hiring processes to understand not to profile you as a black person, a white person, or a Muslim or a Christian, but to profile what is going on in here. What are you like? Are you going to steal from me? What conditions, what would have to happen in your life to turn against me. HR people can learn these basic skills. Funny, I have the same pictures of what he did. And if there is questions, or if you're giving complete control over major systems to people, you can do advanced psychological profiling of these people to understand, are they worthy of your trust? This is not expensive, it is not difficult, and if you're putting somebody into the mission critical components to run your networks, you better invest the additional 500 euros to find out whether they're gonna screw you or not. These two guys, CIA counterintelligence in the United States, assistant director of the FBI, they're both in jail for life. What went wrong? They were not re-vetted. People change. And to assume that somebody was good on day one and is going to be good on day 2000 is not human nature. So we need to re-vet, re-check out, especially those people that were giving huge amounts of control or the keys to the kingdom to. For the government, we need to redefine clearances. We're still doing clearances as though we were fighting the Russians in the Cold War. It's a different world. Do we need the exact same set of rules we had in the 1950s to be defining the skill set so I can hire you? Does a top secret clearance mean that you cannot have access to the tools that you need that are open source because the United States or another country says, that tool is secret. Well, I got it on the internet. It's still secret. It's insane. We need to redefine what we mean in the context of the job that needs to get done. One size does not fit all. Oh, I wish you could see the bottom of that. Oh, there it is. It's Canadians. At least we're not an American. We cannot hire foreigners to do 
huge amounts of the work that we need to get done to defend the country's networks. We're not allowed to. It's against the law. That's crazy. We've got to rethink how we're going to allow people in a global society to really work together as part of a community. Geeks love going to work at 9 and going home at 5, don't we? That, that, sir, you just rose your hand, right? You're fired. We don't do that. Geeks are going to set their own hours. Management needs to learn to set objectives, technical objectives, and realize that you make them to work for 35 straight hours, drink a lot of Red Bull, I've seen a lot of that going on down here, and then you're going to crash into home for two days, think about it a little bit, and then come back and solve it in 45 minutes on Thursday. It's done differently. Problem solving is not linear, and you cannot put it into the confines of a clock. We have to change. We need to stop drug testing. What the hell are we doing allowing raging alcoholics to run our governments, yet if you smoke a little weed, you can't work for a bank or the Defense Department. Where is the common sense in this? Where does that make sense? We need to get over it. For people that have ADD or ADHD, in the United States, we prescribe methamphetamine. We prescribe speed for people. The alternative is smoke a little weed. Yet, that means you cannot be hired, you cannot go to work in most any company of any size, United States and Canada, because we have a drug-free workplace. We have 72% of our staff are alcoholics, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. Can't have any weed. This is all about learning how to hire the unhirables, but the people that you need. They think different, they look different, they behave different, they talk different. It is different. We need to start getting over this, and we need to get management, executives, policies to change so that we can fill these 10,000 jobs now just for the Department of Homeland Security in the United States alone. 10,000 just for them. But right now, unless you're a pure, have never done anything wrong person and happen to be willing to look good and go to work, you can't get hired. And that is hurting us all. We need to be able to give you guys some stuff. We need to be able to give people that go to work in this field, yeah, go to conferences, go to hacker cons, yes. We are going to give you a good budget because that's where you're going to learn. That's where you're going to meet people, get into the community, and do a better job. Yes, you can own your own tools. You don't have to give them away. You do work for the company, you build us a product, you secure one of ours, that's our product. But the tools that are developed, keep them. Let us use them too, but they're yours. You developed them. Because you probably developed them at home too, about half the time. You've got to change some of these rules. Because you ever go to a corporation and say, everything you do for us, we own. It's not going to work anymore. Given that people with Asperger's, people in IT and in security that are a little different. Companies need to be able to give them a good work environment that is not maybe a cubicle with 500 more all around. Create a different environment. Who does that really well? Google does it well. Apple does it well. A few developing companies do it well. Not in the government. Not in big corporations. We need to give support systems. We give support systems for those that are drug abusers, alcohol abusers. We do all of that in our offices. Let's embrace this new type of people that are desperately, desperately needed inside 
of our networks to help protect them. How about no more meetings? No more meetings. Yeah, when we, get, when we have a meeting, it's about five of us sitting down over a Red Bull or a beer to solve something. These, they bore us shitless. No. How do you say that in French? Uh, what, mer putain or something crazy like that? We want to give you, you should have access to cool technology. Have some toys. If you're going to go to work for the government, they got some awesome technology. Awesome technology. You ought to be able to play with it once in a while. Why not? Because it's against the policy, it's against security clearance. You can't do this, you can't do that. Again, they want to find reasons why to say no instead of finding answers to the problem. If you're defending networks, you have to have attack areas inside. You gotta be able to learn how to attack better than the attackers. We don't do a very good job of this. And you can't do it with a security clearance right now because the concept of open source and having a clearance do not work together with our current policies. They have to change. So what do I expect? Companies need to be aware that really, really, really good geeks, they're awkward. They're different. They do not filter their mouth. They say what they fucking think. Don't you? You say what you think. Honestly, they have to adapt to the new type of technology-enabled people, especially the 20-somethings now that are growing up and living and breathing this every day since they were born. So they need to get over it. Execs need to get over it. Governments need to get over it. The Defense Department needs to get over all of this, and the lawyers have to stay the hell out of the way. The lawyers are the first ones to say, no, you cannot do that. We gotta get them out of the way, or we have to instruct them, find a way to make it work. Make it work. So, people aren't the same. There's a few things that we need to do, and I don't think any of them are terribly hard. It's a matter of changing some mindsets. It's a matter of being politically incorrect, yes. It's a matter of adapting a culture inside of an organization. And it's a matter of not trying to make everybody the same. Everybody's different in this community. Everybody is very, very different. But the skills are needed, yet the companies and the governments are saying we cannot find the talent. That's bullshit. Talent's out there, it's your policies, it's your current rules, and it's your outmoded way of thinking that is not allowing you to do the job that you're supposed to do. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I will be around to talk with anybody that would like to. Thank you. Thank you very much.
almost red. Yes, sir. Hey, hi, sir. Uh, just one question. Um, I totally agree with you. Look at me. I got dreadlocks and black, etc., etc. But I feel that's a bit utopic what you said because in the real world, uh, unfortunately, it's very really difficult to to get to this point. So, what's the solution? That's what the point of all of this is, is to say things have to change. The internet is not here. The internet was, when I went for my first job at at and and IBM, the internet experiment had not begun. How much of the world has changed in 43 years? It's amazing. I am saying that the Cold War is over. The first thing that the United States did is says, let's get rid of the military, let's get rid of all the spies, but let's keep everything else in place, the secrecy, the truth. Other things needed to change. The world is changing drastically. Technology is what is changing it for seven billion people. And we have to start somewhere. One of the uh, yellow words, wordings up here was from a U.S. defense contractor called Raytheon. And they do secret work for the government. I don't know how they did it, but they created a room which is 3,000 square meters only for oddball IT people. They do not have security clearances. They are what we call compartmentalized. They're put in the big room, they can come and go, they can bring beer in. So Raytheon has found a way to make it work. What I'm saying is that if one company can start to make it work, we should be able to help, and our governments and our policies should be able to make it work for everybody. That's all. Any other comments or questions? I will be here for a while and I don't want to eat up into the next speaker's time. All right, again, thank you very much.